Example one, you have a newlywed couple. Neither the man or the woman had premarital sex. Neither of them have ever watched pornography. Neither of them have a real expectation of what sex is supposed to be. Other than this part goes here and we do stuff till seed is deposited. To be very frank and non-vulgar, all they really know is that sex after marriage glorifies God and sex before marriage does not. After the consummation of their marriage, the husband and wife discovered that they enjoyed their time. And over the course of their marriage, they learned how to make it more intimate, more pleasurable, and more fun. All with the conviction that they're glorifying God while doing so. Example number two, you have another newlywed couple. Let's say in this example, the woman, she neither had watched pornography or had premarital sex. However, the husband has had fornication with about 20 different women before this marriage, with each of them at least twice. So he fornicated about 40 times. Now, after the consummation of their marriage, the wife once again discovers that she had an enjoyable time. However, with the husband, he couldn't help but compare the experience he had with his wife to other experiences that he had in the past. Because he had acquired a lot of experiences with other women in the past, he developed a standard of what good sex should be. But really, what is good sex other than sex that is appointed by God? In his mind, he might be thinking that the experiences that he had might help to better satisfy his wife. But remember, the wife has no expectations or other experiences to relate with. She was already expecting good loving because good loving is loving that is godly. And even if the wife didn't have a satisfactory time, the husband and wife are in a guilt-free, godly marriage where they can continue practicing and exploring what makes the partner satisfied. But now the husband finds himself feeling guilty because he feels dissatisfied. And he only feels dissatisfied because he disobeyed God. Example three, another newlywed couple. This time, each of them had various different partners in their life before they went into marriage. However, they discover within this marriage that they had a wonderful time consummating their marriage. In fact, it was truly for each of them the best experience they ever had in comparison with their other partners. Even though they each experienced the best kind of pleasure in the godly way, this experience is tainted by the fact that they both disobeyed God prior to the marriage. These are just some examples, some models of the world that don't necessarily reflect what goes on in real, much more complicated scenarios that happen in the world. But I wanted to use them to illustrate the idea that marriage is sort of a seal for sexual experience. The complexities and the subtleties of sexual union are magnified when you choose to spend it with one person under the glory and covenant of God. And in that way, you can do it without making yourself or your spouse feel bad.